Here's a quick video to introduce some of the key concepts you need to know when using TaskTop data. So keep in mind our goal is to flow data from multiple source systems for the purposes of reporting and analytics, all part of our mission of TaskTops to connect the world of software delivery. So what are the key concepts we're going to go through? Well, there's really six key concepts, artifacts, collections, models, integrations, flow specifications, and templates. So let's start with artifacts and collections. Artifacts are the tangible byproducts produced during the development of software. Key artifacts are things like defects, stories, requirements, test cases, even things like timesheets. And a collection at its simplest level is really simply a set of artifacts from your repository. I liken, liken collections often to thinking of a drawer in a file cabinet with your artifacts inside. The thing about collections is there's a little bit more to, to them that we should understand. They have a few key shared characteristics. First one is that all artifacts in a collection must be of the same core artifact type. So as you can see, the collection on the left has only defects. The collection on the right is not a valid collection because it's trying to have defects and requirements. Second characteristic, all artifacts in a coll collection must be sourced or come from a single instance of a third party system. So again, on the left, we have a collection being fed from Jira. On the right, we've got a collection that's invalid, trying to feed both defects, defects from both Jira and HP at the same time. Not valid. The third characteristic is that a collection can have artifacts coming from multiple projects from the same source system, as long as the artifacts of, are all of the same core type. Now, back to our mission. How do we connect the world of software delivery? At its simplest level, now that we understand uh, a bit about collections, uh, an integration is simply the, flow, the flowing of data between collection A and collection B. But this presents some challenges, which brings us to our next concept. You say tomato, I say tomato. Well, every artifact in every different system has some special characteristics or makes it is a little bit different between different systems. Um, in particular, they tend to have different definitions of the fields that make up that artifact. So you see on the left a defect that has description, priority, high, medium, low, trivial, fixed version. What, whereas the defect on the right, while largely similar, it's not called description, it's called summary, and the priority is numbers, and there's five of them, not four of them. I um, mean, it's called a target release, and it also has other fields associated with it too. So this presents a challenge for us. So let's dig into that a little bit. If you have two, uh, two people speaking two different languages, you need exactly one translator in order to facilitate their communication, their flow. If you have three, you need exactly three to communicate the flow <clears throat> of information. But what happens when you start to introduce six or 10 or 20? It doesn't scale to have direct D direct translations between each individual, each individual person, or I liken the analogy to what we do, each individual in system. So what do we do about that? Well, we have introduced this concept of a model where everyone speaks to the model and the model then takes care of translating to the other side. And that does allow for scalability. So you can have 10 systems connected to, to 10 other systems and it, it's a linear function essentially. So keep that in mind um, because that's why you need models. So what we do is we take uh, each collection and we map it to a model. And that then allows us to easily communicate between a variety of different systems. There's more to it than just the scalability, the scalability issue that models solve. I've discussed that with you. But in addition, models provide a common language um, that can be uh, used to normalize data across disparate systems. And it's not even just about normalization. That can be a catalyst for getting people kind of to agree on things, the, the meet me in the middle notion. And finally, models off also solve the lowest common denominator problem. So you, when you are flowing information between, between systems, you don't typically need to flow absolutely everything about a defect or a story. What you want 
is if you use models, it allows you to focus on the important pieces of that artifact that you want to flow through, which thereby increases the efficiency of the flow. So let's go back now and fully define what a collection is. First, they have one core artifact type. Second, they can come from many different projects. Third, they must be sourced from one repository. And finally, fourth, the notion we just, just discussed, they all must map uh, to one model. That is the definition of a collection. Great, so now we've, uh, we've covered off on artifacts, collections, and models. So what is the actual, an actual integration? Well, let's go back to our goal. Remember, we are wanting to flow data from multiple source systems for the purposes of reporting and analytics. At the highest level, we do that by defining an integration whereby collection A flows information to collection B. And it can get more complicated because you can have multiple collections all flowing information to collection B. <clears throat> One quick thing about collections that's important to note is that collections have the ability to both send artifacts, receive artifacts, or send and receive artifacts. And what a collection does depends on the integration it's participating in and, of course, on the constraints of the repository the collection is connected to. And all of this is part of the flow specification. So <clears throat> just a quick a screenshot of, of our system whereby I'm showing you the definition of an integration where I have collection on one side, collection on the other side, and a flow specification. So you might be thinking, flow specification, what does that really mean? Well, there are some gory details to it, but don't worry. That's why we have the last concept, which we call templates. Templates provide the smarts to pre-configure as much of the flow specification as possible, but they don't constrain you either. You're always able to change what's been configured. So again, going back to our goal, if the purpose is reporting, we have a, a template that will help set up the flow specification and the collections for you. So now we've covered off on all the key concepts and we've met our goal. So thanks for listening. Stay tuned.